My name is Dylan Rothbein. I am Asperger's dyslexic and I experience male to female gender dysphoria, making me a male to female transsexual. There's another diagnosis I have to inform you of my audience because my life circumstances have changed. I've never talked about it out on my channel, but this is the story of how I got it. I have Lyme disease and this is the story how I got about got Lyme disease. When I was in residential, I went on a hike with my science class at age 12. I let my staff know despite being selectively mute. The staff took me to the hospital where the doctor recommended I take a Lyme disease blood test. They recommended the test despite me not having a bullseye rash, synonymous with Lyme disease. My school, site, my school doctor had the foresight to test me for Lyme disease in the ER. The blood test came back positive. They also x-rayed my knee. At the ER, they proceeded to put a splint on my leg to control the swelling. It wasn't until I got back to school, I was given crutches. I proceeded to use crutches for six weeks. During the six weeks, I was on an antibiotic. Two weeks after I got hospital model crutches, I got forearm crutches. I, I got an upgrade of forearm crutches from my mother. For the next six weeks, I was unable to walk any distance without my crutches. This is why I was oftentimes dropped off to school so I didn't have to walk 20 minutes. During that time, I did see some specialists, but ultimately nothing came of it. During one doctor's appointment, which was canceled, I thought I was cured, so I took off the splint in the crutches due to not enough staff. Three days later, I tried playing capture a flag with my residents, with, with the kids in my residence, and I realized my endurance was completely and utterly shot. Anytime uh, I had to stop playing, playing sports, and any time bad weather came, I felt it coming whether it be rain, snow, or cold. Other than every so often I would have a flare, I would take Tylenol. And one time I borrowed my mother's cane when it got really bad. But ultimately nothing came of it. Although mm. I walked around with a limp. When I was 14, I was joking around with some kids in my residence. And... My staff informed me that my Lyme disease would never leave my body. When I was 15, I thought I was going blind, which lasted for eight months. Unfortunately, this was probably the start of some symptoms of neurologic Lyme. At the time, I was told I had macular degeneration and that I was colorblind to purple and blue. Previous to this, I was wearing glasses since I was three for myopia and astigmatism. I noticed when I was 15, blurred vision, and my vision was deteriorating. I had trouble seeing things. The doctors never explained to me how Lyme disease would affect me long term, so I had no idea. Oftentimes, people didn't realize how much pain I was in. I did things I probably should not have done looking back had I known. I would walk for long distances and be in agony. I did try to get it addressed with physical therapists and foot doctors and other specialists, but nobody seemed interested in the long-term effects. As time went on, I went on with my life and things got harder. I had a lot of trouble carrying things, particularly at age 23 when I started experiencing muscle loss when I started taking estrogen. After doing all these things, I accepted the chronic pain and thought it was normal. I'd been in chronic pain for most of my life since age 12. When I was 27, I came off the most active year of the greatest, the most active year of my life. I just finished college with a bachelor's degree in history from SUNY Empire State College. It was the most active year of my life where I was hiking regularly. So... I was preparing to go to Israel 
to go to yeshiva where I was later thrown out of for disability related reasons. So I started practicing. I, I started studying Torah for seven hours a day with a screen reader in Israel. And my health took a turn for the worst. In retrospect, so did the line. In Texas, I experienced the first nail in the coffin of my health. I experienced my first seizure due to cold water. When I had seizures, I, my, my eyes would twitch and my legs would shake. And I would go into paralysis for between 5 to 20 minutes. After I had my first seizure, I had, I had left Texas for New York and then Miami. Uh, because of a travel ban in Israel. I started to see a pattern to my seizures where they started to get worse. Before I went to Israel and before I'd left New York, I asked my doctor about these seizures and a medical mask exemption. When I was in Miami, I looked deeper into the seizures and I started making a seizure log. I realized an overlap between epilepsy and autism. And I began to think, was my past meltdowns uh, actually seizures? Due to the fact that I was at risk for becoming homeless and having an abusive familial dynamic, I went to Israel penniless and homeless. When I arrived, I've been in Israel, my health got worse. By this point, the seizures got worse and much more violent. I began to experience physical agony in both knees. This was the start of me losing mobility and my ability to walk. Before I had left Miami, a friend had suggested I should get crutches based upon how things were going. In the short term, I thought I was okay and I thought she was crazy. By the time I got to spot a month after being in Israel, a month after getting to Israel, things got worse. As I walked around spot, I started losing my balance and falling. The balance before I worked on in physical therapy was disappearing. The more I walked, the more pain I was in. Along with the seizure log, we got one seizure on video for the first time. I was able to talk during the seizure and most of the other seizures. Okay. How does this look to you? It looks horrible. Does this look like a seizure to you? Yes, it does. I'm sorry you have to see this. I know. It's okay. Can't help it. So do me a favor, keep an eye on the time because I can't really open up my eyes right now. Yeah, it's been about a minute. All right. I have no feeling in my arms right now.
Double V uh, has begun. Uh. Uh. When I was in spot, I spent Shabbat going in and out of consciousness, and it got so bad I couldn't even do morning prayers for Shabbat. By this point, I had to swallow my pride and admit she was right, and I had to start using crutches. At this point, I had to find crutches because I was afraid I would wake up and not be able to move at all. At this point, I knew it was a race against time that I would lose the ability to walk. When I was in Migdal Hall AMAC, I started having five seizures a day. I had, when I was in Migdal AMAC, I tried going to the Israeli ER. I would have gone sooner, but Israel had socialized medicine and I couldn't uh, go because my citizenship application was still pending. When I tr went to ER to get my seizures addressed, they claimed that my seizures were from my estrogen and my bipolar. I felt so awful, I tried, I started calling people to give my last goodbyes. I was given IV fluids and I got kicked out of the ER. My friend tried to send crutches for me from the U to me from the US and because of customs, they couldn't be sent. I tried to find crutches in Haifa, but there were two medical, there weren't any medical supply stores. I was forced to do without mobility aids and I could barely navigate high phone. At this point, I started getting worse. I had a seizure while crossing the street, and I thought I was going to fall and pass out and die as a result. When I was in high five, I was so bad, I was passing out right away. I was severely dehydrated. By this point, I was in and out of consciousness with a severe fever, and I had to call the Israeli ambulance on myself. I was thrown out of the ER and told all I needed was ibuprofen. For a while, ibuprofen helped the pain in my legs. I needed the ibuprofen to walk to the train uh, after in Jerusalem after Passover. By this point, I started orientating myself towards physical disability whenever possible. I started sitting down in the shower and I started uh, sitting while brushing my teeth. By this point, it was clear that because of my seizures and mobility, I had to cut my time in Israel short. I had uh, no food. I was living on, I had a severe migraine for three weeks and I was living on just French fries, one meal a day of French fries and pudding for three weeks. I knew about my anemia and I knew my anemia was getting worse. My father left me without food, so I was forced to save my SSI to get back to the U.S. I saved my SSI by food rationing even more. After fighting with my father, I secured a flight to the United States. After fighting with my father on May 14th, 2022. When I got back on the first day, I kept eating and throwing up for hours. Before coming back to the United States, I told my parents what was happening with my body and they blamed it on the bipolar. Unfortunately, in order to get out of Israel, I had to concede to stay with my parents, which proved to be a disaster. I made plans to come back and to get mobility aids in the airport where I got a wheelchair. At Newark airport, I got greeted with a wheelchair and nobody asked about my diagnosis. After being kicked out of the yeshiva, the airport felt like red carpet treatment. <laughs> when I got to Port Authority, I didn't have a wheelchair and I was screaming in pain. I had to get help with my bags from strangers. I was sitting on the floor of Port Authority and I couldn't move to go to the bathroom. When I got to my mother's, after a few days of eating my mother's cooking, and American pain colors, I, the migraine went away. And I thought I was improving. My mother gave me her cane, which only helped for three days. And despite my mother's shower bench, I fell in the shower. My mother also had a rim. When I was using the cane, I tried to get Chinese food. They put the food in a box as opposed to a bag. And I was 
walking to my mother's house in excruciating pain. When I was walking home, I thought I was going to wet myself and that I had no way of, uh, I thought I was going to, the box, I, I thought I was going to, I had no way of holding the box. When I got home, I had a full blown seizure while having dinner. My mother saw me seizing and she did not care. When I tried walking, standing on line, go to CVS and to go out for Chinese food, uh, when I went to CVS to refill my hormones, I couldn't even stand on line. When I realized after eating Chinese food, I couldn't walk the five, five minutes home, I called the cab. A week later, I was kicked out of my mother's house and sent to my dad's, which was an inaccessible nightmare. I was forced to live in the basement without a stove, and the bathroom was on an upstairs level with the sink. At first, I was able to use the railing and my cane to get up the steps, but then I had to throw, I had to throw my cane up the flight of stairs, and I had to drag myself up the steps on my butt. I started having seizures on the steps where I started falling on the steps and my father did not care. When I walk, got up one more morning, I could hardly walk to the bus stop to get food. At that point, I was hospitalized for anemia and I begged them to do something about my legs and the seizures. I was never given a diagnosis other than anemia and they only gave me opioid painkillers. I couldn't get back. I, a day after I got back, I couldn't even get to the bus stop again. So I went back to the ER hoping they would give me crutches. When I went back to the ER, I was told I had a neuromuscular problem, but that most of it was due to me being nervous. This ER wouldn't follow my mask exemption. So they, so the ER jumped so the security jumped on me uh, because they didn't understand my involuntary movements. They thought I was self-harming. I was so startled, I wet myself. I got hospital model crutches from the hospital and three days later, I got forearm crutches from my friend as a gift. I bought a shower bench and grab bars with my SSI, but my father said I couldn't use them in his home. I used my crutches to walk long distances a few, uh, over the course of a few weeks to get food and medication, but it became harder to do over time. It became harder and harder to use the steps and I was falling five times a day. Figured out a way to leave Binghamton to move to Florida. When I got to Florida, I could no longer bend my knees. By this point, my pain was so bad, I couldn't even get to synagogue to go to their Friday night service on crutches. I knew I needed a wheelchair, so I bought one on my SSI. It is my first wheelchair. A wheelchair is a manual wheelchair. This is wheelchair.
My leg is wearing less pain, but I lost all feeling in my legs. I used to be able to walk for short periods, and I had a crutch holder um, that I used when I left my house. A month after I received a documentation saying that I had arthritis due to Lyme and that I was physically disabled. I continued to decline and three weeks later I met with a physical therapist who said I was no longer able to stand up safely. He said I would never walk again. Two days later, I woke up a paraplegic having zero feeling or movement in my legs. Now that I'm paralyzed, things are beginning to get better because I'm out of pain for the first time. For the first time since I got Lyme, I can envision snowball fights with my future children because I'm no longer in pain. Now... My upper body feels like it did before I had Lyme disease because my upper body was never affected by Lyme. Unfortunately, the Lyme disease spread to my brain, which may led to brain swelling, which made this, uh, the seizures worse and affected my vision so I might go blind. I've elected to stop wearing glasses. I can now turn the page from Lyme, but... Um, and I can leave the tick pipe behind, but in many ways, the lack of walking has been a positive. Because Lyme disease kills the nerves, I am now free of Lyme because as Jack Bruce says, I feel free. I have to come to grips with the reality I'll be a chair user for the rest of my life. And I'm going to have to come to grips with my internalized ableism. I hope this video serves as a reminder that disability is a part of life, as Jason Ross once said. Some people go through life walking and others never walk a day in their lives. This is why going forward, I will make videos on my channel about wheelchair skills and physical disability. I will mourn the loss of my legs that I thought I had that were never as good as I thought. No matter how I navigate the world, standing or not, speaking or speaking or not, we are all created equal. Impairments can shift, but they don't shift my character. I will continue to do more disability rights work.